many of you consider yourselves to be healthy eaters? Okay. <laughs> I never thought much about what I ate. I just made sure that I ate fruits, vegetables, and basically a balanced meal every time I ate. But on top of that, I wouldn't care if I ate three cinnamon rolls for breakfast or two slices of cake for dessert because I was a swimmer and I would burn off every single calorie that I ate, so it didn't really matter for me. The only time I would cut out the junk food was about two weeks before a big swim meet because my coach told me to. So once I quit swimming, I gained about 20 pounds last summer, and that's where my fascination with healthy eating and nutrition began. Now, I'm not a nutrition major, I'm a business major who just happens to have a strong interest in nutrition and spent a lot of time last summer looking into it. The term healthy eating changes from person to person, but generally following a healthy diet includes choosing plenty of lean meats, eggs, vegetables, fruit, and whole grains, says Deborah Nessel, a registered dietitian. That excludes a lot of food that are typical college dorm foods like the ramen noodles or the Hope's cookies that you can get at every checkout register on campus. That's basically all processed foods that you can think of. But the big problem with healthy eating is that a lot of people are uneducated about what that means. And here's a graph from Statista that shows that the percentage of U.S. adults who are obese by level of education. So the high school graduates are less tend to be more obese than people who have gone on to postgraduate um, school after college. Um, this summer, while looking more into healthy eating, I realized how unhealthy the American culture is, and this graph is a perfect example of that. An easy way to get started on healthy eating is to become educated about reading food labels. Knowing the nutrition facts about a product can help you start to realize how bad or good a food is for you that you are consuming and it might make you think twice before eating it. Goldberg says that a recent study indicates that many Americans struggle with interpreting what all the facts on the nutrition labels mean. And one important mistake a lot of people make is not knowing the serving size of a bag of chips or something. You might just eat the whole bag of chips without knowing that the, it was supposed to be two servings and not one. Nutritionist Bonnie Liebman of the Center of Science gives these pointers about reading nutrition facts. And they're basically all the words in bold. So you should look at the serving size, as I just said, the calories from fat, and then total fat, which, um, and then cholesterol, sodium, total carbohydrates. The main thing with that is looking at the amount of added sugar that there is, protein, and then all the daily percent values are over here, and those are based on a 2,000 calorie diet. And then if a item has 10% or more, that means it's a good um, product or a good source of vitamins and minerals. But those numbers can still be kind of confusing to read. So if that's a little hard for you, um, then another alternative is just looking at the ingredient list. If there's a long list of words that you do not understand, for example on this, thiamine monotrate or disodium guanylate, I have no idea what that means. So it probably means it's a chemical that isn't good for your body and you should just stay away from it. It's important to become educated on nutrition because the amount of our population that is obese is only forecasted to increase in the future. So this other graph from the Statista compares the 2012 to 2000, or forecasted 2030 obesity ratings. And it's easier to look at this part of the graph because it's the part that are obese and this is a percent of people that are not obese. So you can see that in 2012 it's 35 and it's projected to go up to 44% in 2030. So what else can healthy eating do for you? Lacey Weber gives six reasons to eat healthy. First, as we've discussed with obesity, is regulating weight. Decreasing your weight can lead to lower blood pressure, improve cholesterol levels, and decrease your risk of diabetes according to the obesity action correlation. Another <coughs> not so fun fact about obesity is that it contributes to nearly <coughs> one in five deaths in America. That's according to a, a recent study from Columbia University. You can also increase your productivity by fueling your bodies with nutritious, with nutritious food. Like a car, your brain needs quality fuel to run efficiently. A 2012 study published by po Population Health Management found that eating an unhealthy diet puts you at a 66% increased risk of produ productivity loss. And as weird as this next one might be, you can also save money on life insurance. 
Life insurance rates are largely based on age and health. You could face double the life insurance cost if you're obese. So switching to a healthier diet and maintaining good weight before you, before you apply for a policy could significantly decrease your costs. Next, enhance your mood with nutritious food. What you eat has an impact on your brain, including the parts that regulate mood. There's no single food that is proven as an antidepressant, but maintaining stable blood sugar through a regular proper nutrition will help you feel better overall on most days. Foods rich in vitamins and minerals, such as fruits, whole grains, and vegetables, have been associated with an overall lower risk of depression, and also foods that are rich in omega-3 fats. You can also just be healthier overall. Not everybody who is thin is healthy, and not everybody who is overweight is unhealthy. But eating right can improve health for even thin people who like to eat a ton of junk food. You can think of junk food as anything that's high in calories and low in micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. Eating right can also extend your life. If you miss out on too much of the vitamins and minerals that your body needs, you could put yourself at risk for early death. A diet of fruit, vegetables, in combination with exercise were associated with extending life expectancy for those in their 70s, according to a study with the Journal of American Geriatrics Society. Cal Poly Dining even gives us nutrition information for each of their campus dining locations to be more informed about healthy eating and make it a little easier on us. So here's a snapshot of what it looks like for the Pico's restaurant in the app. They list all the foods that they have, and the list keeps going. This is just a snapshot. And then basically, all the factors that are on the nutrition label are just listed horizontally here. So I encourage you to all give it a try. And next time, look at the nutrition label on your food and see if it is healthy for you.